Good day and thank you for standing by. Welcome to Katronic's second quarter 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are on a listen-only mode. After the speaker's presentation, there will be a question and answer session. To ask a question during the session, you will need to press star 11 on your telephone. You will then hear an automatic message advising your hand is raised. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded Wednesday, May 22, 2024. I would now like to send the conference over to Rochelle Burr, Chief Administrative Officer. Please go ahead. Thank you, Livia. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our review of Photronics Fiscal 2024 Second Quarter Results. Joining me this morning are Frank Lee, our Chief Executive Officer, Chris Progler, our Chief Technology Officer, and Eric Rivera, our Interim Chief Financial Officer and Chief Accounting Officer. The press release we issued earlier this morning together with the presentation material that accompanies our remarks are available on the Investor Relations section of our webpage. Comments made by any participant on today's call may include forward-looking statements that include such words as anticipate, believe, estimate, expect, forecast, and in our view. These forward-looking statements are based upon a number of risks, uncertainties, and other factors that are difficult to predict. Although we believe the expectations reflected in the forward-looking statements are reasonable, we cannot guarantee future results, levels of activity, performance, or achievements. We are under no duty to update any of the forward-looking statements after the date of the presentation to conform these statements to actual results. During the course of our discussion, we will refer to certain non-GAAP financial metrics. These numbers are useful for analysts, investors, and management to evaluate ongoing performance. A reconciliation of these metrics to GAAP financial results is provided in our presentation materials. At this time, I will turn the call over to Frank. Thank you, Alicia, <clears throat> and good morning, everyone. Second quarter sales increased slightly from the first quarter as a positive seasonality trends were mostly offset by temporary market soft risk following the Chinese New Year holiday and the impact from earthquake in Taiwan. On April 3rd, a major earthquake hit Taiwan where we have three manufacturing facilities. I'm happy to report that our people are safe and there was no significant damage to our sites or equipment. The strength of the earthquake and following aftershocks impact our production through to downtown. As we must investigate to ensure there's no damage to our facilities and manufacturing equipment. In addition, we must repair or reject masks that were in process at the time of the events. Our IC and APD teams in Taiwan are experienced in dealing with these events, and nearly all tours were fully recovered within a few days. However, the loss of production time and in-process inventory results in a reduction in sales of approximately $3 million. <clears throat> Order rates at the beginning of Q2 were strong. Continue the positive trend we saw at the end of Q1 and consistent with the high order rates we typically see ahead of the Lunar New Year holiday. Following the holiday, we usually see increase in bookings as customers return to work. This year, the rent in order rates was lower than our expectation. In addition, the timing of earthquake following the holiday further reduced booking causing April revenue to be soft. Since then, order rates have increased and we are entering the third quarter with higher confidence. These factors contribute to sales of 270 million in the second quarter. I see sales improve 
quarter over quarter, while equity decreased. Compared with the first quarter, growth margin was similar, and operation margin was slightly lower as we had higher R&D expense, driven by an increase in qualification activity. As a result, report EPS was 58 cents on an adjusted base, EPS was 46 cents. Cash flow was good during the quarter, and we further strengthened our balance sheet to position us to invest in the multiple growth opportunity we have, especially in IC. I would like to recognize the dedication of the Global Photonics team this quarter to achieve these results, especially those in Taiwan that respond to the added challenge. Turning to the market, reversing the trend seen over the previous three quarters, our IC mainstream sales increased, mainly driven by market share gain. High-end was down, preliminary due to lower U.S. demand. Consistent with most of the end users, we see the overall semiconductor environment gradually improving into our physical Q3 and Q4 across most IC segments and regions. High-end LPD was softer as MRA design demand has not yet ramp ahead of new premium smartphones that will soon begin production ahead of four launches. Longer term, we remain optimistic regarding positive demand trend for both IC and APD. IC customers in Asia continue to migrate to smaller design nodes, including 22 and 28 nanometers. We are well positioned to capture this business. We also expect mega trends such as AI to drive chip design activity to handle AI workloads and edge processors. We expect a wide range of IC types to be developed in support of this AI ecosystem from GPU, CPU, and ASIC to high band memory and power electronics. We also continue to expect trends in supply chain regionalization to drive market demand, auto mass demand in support of new fare. For display, despite near-term softness in demand, we remain optimistic long-term. Mobile devices continue to be introduced with new displays that contain advanced features enabled by higher value photo masks. In addition, panel makers continue development efforts to extend MLA technology into bigger displays, such as tablets and laptops. We will soon see MLA produced on G8.6 panels. Our MPD mask solutions are relied upon for new design for new display on these cycles and the most demanding mass production of advanced displays. Overall, we maintain an optimistic long-term outlook for mass demand and see many positive factors that support multi-node growth trend across Asia, US, and Europe. We believe our strong customer relations, including long-term purchase agreement, coupled with leading technology and high output capacity, should allow us to outgrow the photo mass industry. As we do, our proven ability and commitment to keep costs low should enable us to expand margins and generate strong cash flow allowing us to continue investing in growth. At this time, I will turn the call over to Eric to review our second quarter results and provide 
serve water contents. Thank you, Frank, and good morning, everyone. Second quarter revenue of $217 million was slightly higher than the first quarter. There were headwinds that limited growth in a period that is typically up on seasonality, including the Taiwan earthquakes and soft demand following the Chinese New Year. IC revenue growth was mixed. Quarter over quarter improved as robust mainstream demand more than offset high-end weakness, primarily in the U.S. On a year-over-year -year comparison, IC was down as strong high-end volumes shipped to foundries in Asia were more than offset by lower mainstream demand. Order rates at the beginning of Q3 give us confidence for the upcoming quarter, and we remain confident on the long-term outlook for IC photo mass demand. FPD revenue was lower sequentially and year over year, with softness in both high-end and mainstream. Seasonally soft high-end trends were heightened due to the earthquake and FX headwinds. Looking into the third quarter, demand for mobile display masks is expected to pick up on seasonality trends ahead of anticipated fall launches of new premium smartphones. Gross margin was 36.5%, essentially the same as the first quarter and down from last year, primarily due to lower premium charges. The resulting operating margin was 25.8%, down from last quarter and last year. Operating expenses were higher this quarter due to increased R&D as we had a high level of qualification activity. This bodes well for future demand as most qualifications result in incremental revenues. On that note, on the IC side, we process qualification masks from EUV and sub-14 nanometer through mid-range and mainstream nodes in logic and memory. We also plan to enter qualifications of our new multi-beam mask writer in Q3, representing Fortronic's commitment to the highest end of IC mask making. On FPD, we saw increasing utilization of our advanced phase shift mask indicating the higher value lithography processes under development by our customers as Frank highlighted. Net income in the quarter was 36.3 million or 58 cents per diluted share on a gap basis. After adjusting for non-operating FX gain, non-gap net income was 28.7 million or 46 cents per diluted share. We generated 76.5 million in operating cash flow and CapEx was 20 million in the quarter. We still expect total CapEx of 140 million in 2024, primarily in both high-end and mainstream IC to address anticipated demand growth while ensuring we're increasing our return on invested capital. We ended the quarter with a cash balance of 539.2 million short-term investments of $20.7 million and debt of $21.8 million, allowing sufficient liquidity to fund investments in organic growth. Before I provide guidance, I'll remind you that our visibility is always limited as our backlog is typically only one to three weeks and demand for some of our products is inherently uneven and difficult to predict. Additionally, the ASPs for high-end mass sets are high and as this segment of the business grows, a relatively low number of high-end orders can have, a, can have a significant impact on our quarterly revenues and earnings. Given those caveats, we expect the third quarter revenue to be in the range of 221 to 229 million. We expect positive photo mass demand momentum that was interrupted by the Chinese New Year to resume and continue through the third quarter. Based on those revenue expectations and our current operating model, we estimate non-GAAP earnings per share for the third quarter to be in the range of 53 to 59 cents per diluted share. This assumes an operating margin of between 28 and 30 percent as we continue to keep costs under control and maximize profitability. We faced some unique challenges in the second quarter. Despite this, we achieved sales slightly above Q1 levels and were able to maintain good margins. Positive order rates as we exited the second quarter are encouraging for a third quarter of full year outlook. We continue to perform well and build on our solid financial foundation to profitably grow and create shareholder value in 2024 and beyond. I'll now turn the call over to the operator for your questions. 
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you will need to press star 1 1 on your telephone and wait for your name to be announced. To withdraw your question, simply press star 1 1 again. Please stand by while we compile the QA roster. Now, first question coming from the lineup Tom Diffley with DA Davidson. Your line is open. Hi, uh, this is Linda uh, Wiley on behalf of Tom Diffley. Uh, thank you for letting us ask questions this morning. Uh, so to start, uh, very sorry to hear about the impact of the earthquake, and we're glad to hear everyone uh, there was safe. Um, so it's a good thing to hear. Um, so my first question will be on that. Uh, if uh, I heard you correctly, the impact on the quarter from the earthquake was three million, or it was just that uh, was that just on production and inventory? And maybe if you could um, clarify and quantify how much uh, the earthquake impact was and how much of it uh, is embedded in your guidance for uh, the July quarter. Thank you. Hello, Linda. Thank you for asking the question. This is Eric. So the, we had a $3 million impact, uh, like we mentioned, um, related to the earthquake. Most of that was uh, production loss time uh, in terms of materials. Or, or or anything else, it was uh, not significant. The, the majority of it was uh, production last time. Okay, and so and not in part. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, so with respect to, uh, um, is that embedded in our in our forecast? That was a one-time event for us as the, as the earthquake uh, just impacted this, this quarter. Okay, I see. Thank you. Um, and still on the earthquake impact, I have I might have missed it, but are you, uh, is there an impact on the capex plan for this year, or are you still thinking uh, the 140 million that you had mentioned last quarter? Because uh, I'm thinking, given the repairs that might have to take place as you're still investigating, uh, would that have any change on that? And what could be actually? In FPD yeah, sure. We don't expect that to, to change our 140 uh, million expected capex for the year. Okay, so uh, could you remind me again uh, what the split would be FPD and IC? It's mostly IC. There is some FPD there, but it's mostly IC. Got it. Thank you for the clarification. And um, going uh, to overall revenue, um, it remains. Uh, uh, around 5% below your uh, prior year levels. Um, and you mentioned that uh, the rent in order rates uh, was lower than expectations following the Lunar New Year. Uh, could you walk us through what is happening here? Um, why do you continue to see such uh, low levels of growth? And are you seeing impacts primarily from end markets weakness, share losses, given uh, Ramping Chinese competitors or delayed new programs? Uh, Linda, thank you. Uh, in the past, a lot of customers, uh, like uh, the design house customers, they take out uh, before the New Year holiday. So people can take off for the holiday. And we see a uh, very heavy booking, uh, both uh, in high end and mainstream before the holidays. And Normally, after the holiday, uh, the order will recover uh, step by step. Uh, but this year, it seems to be slower than the past. And so uh, we still have very strong uh, first two months in the quarter, but many because of the order before the new year. And in the month of April, uh, the new order coming, the rate of new order coming uh, kind of slow, especially in the high end. So uh, it do impact the April uh, output. And uh, the market seems to be very volatile. Uh, it's not quarter by quarter. It's a uh, month to month. Uh, especially in the high end, because the high end order, every single set uh, is a much higher price. So the impact is bigger than the mainstream business. Uh, however, uh, at the end of the, uh, April and right uh, going into Q3, we do see uh, orders start to uh, recover, 
and uh, uh, in uh, based on the uh, seasonality, Q3 typically is a good month, uh, uh, is a good quarter for uh, Tebo. So we are uh, expecting the higher order, especially will uh, uh, reach to the uh, good level in this quarter. Great. Uh, thank you for that color. Um, so seems like high end is expected to be doing well in the upcoming quarters. Uh, so if you think about uh, mainstream, uh, you mentioned a softer demand environment uh, this quarter. Is that what you're expecting in the next quarter as well? Or And uh, with the uh, softness there, is it in certain segments or across the board? Uh, maybe give us more color on how the demand environment looks like there, maybe current lead times, and uh, and maybe touch on pricing as well. Uh, in a mainstream uh, segment, uh, uh, because a lot of new fab, especially in China, uh, they are ramping up in a mainstream uh, business. So uh, compared to the previous quarters, uh, mainstream demand actually uh, very consistent and uh, 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 increasing uh, uh, quarter by quarter. And uh, in the past several quarters, we do increase our capacity uh, to support the mainstream business. Uh, in previous two years, uh, because of capacity limitation, our uh, uh, lead time for mainstream product are kind of relative long, and so we 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 did not take uh, as many mainstream order as we can. By starting uh, this year, we do have some mainstream new capacity, and we we start to take uh, more order, and that reflect in our. Uh, growth in the mainstream IC business. Great, uh, got it. And then maybe Eric, uh, to looking at gross margins, uh, quite flat uh, from first quarter and done from last year, and uh, I, I believe you mentioned it was due to uh, some premium charges, lower premium charges. Could you touch on that? And then uh, what are you thinking for next quarter? Sure. So, yeah, as as you mentioned, um, our premium charges are, are are much lower this year than they were last year, and that explains the the decrease in revenue and and margin and, and our margin. Uh, with respect to our margin levels uh, for the rest of the year, I I don't expect them to be much different than than what they are at at the current level. Okay, so even if uh, the demand environment changes, are you still expecting the same levels? Uh, I'm sorry, say again, I'm sorry? Uh, even uh, expecting an upturn on the horizon, are you thinking the same for next year and uh, second half this year as well? Uh, the premium may not come back, uh, however, because the uh, better product means uh, more high end, especially in the uh, uh, 22 and 28 nanometer product. Uh, our uh, branded ASP that do increase uh, quarter by quarter. So if we compare with uh, last year, even the premium disappear, uh, our overall uh, gross margin actually uh, increase uh, quarter by quarter. So. Uh, the, the, it's nice to have premium charge, but uh, we know it's uh, not a long-term event, so mm -hmm. we put a lot of effort to in, improve our product mix such that uh, the branded SP can be uh, higher. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. And our next question coming from the line of Eric Reck with Portree Island Advisory. Your line is open. Thank you very much. Um, 
Uh, good to hear about um, the orders recovering at the end of April and, and looking good and going into May and, and uh, you know, the minimal impact despite the, the, the earthquake. And I guess the first question is on the earthquake. I, I'm not too familiar with um, how photo masks might fare in, you know, a disruptive earthquake like that. Do you expect that there was some damage to photo masks that were being used in the market at the time and that that should lead to, um, you know, some photo masks needing to be scrapped or serviced and, and that could lead to a potential bump in, um, you know, future quarter revenues? Uh, yes. Uh, during the earthquake, most of our equipment has a self-protection system. So uh, if the earthquake is over a certain scale, the tour will shut down uh, automatically to uh, protect the tour. And at the same time, if there are any photo masks in the process inside the tour, that photo mask will be considered incomplete. So it cannot continue the process. It has to be rejected. And certain photo masks, uh, for example, if it's in a cleaning process, then uh, we may have to check that the, the, is any defect or contamination on the mask. And some can be repaired, some cannot be repaired. We have to reject. So none of the damage or impact mask will go to customers. However, there, there will be uh, a reject or repair in the production line. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, there are no further questions at this time. I will now turn the call back over to Mr. Frankly for closing comments. Okay. Thank you for joining us this morning. We had a slower than expect start to 2024, and the earthquake in early April impact our results. Yet, we remain optimistic that we can achieve another year of solid results. The team is performing well. The long-term outlook for our market is supported by positive mega trends such as AI, and we are in a good position to benefit due to our global presence and advanced technology. I look forward to updating you on our progress. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your line at this time. Thank you.